Recording. Right. Now, this is a good trick for converting... Don't laugh. <laughs> I'm not. Sorry, I just smiled. This is a good trick for converting um, units. And basically, it's a 3-2-1 rule, and it works a lot for units of length. So we've got metres, and we'll change that later on. Uh, so when you go from kilometres to metres, you multiply by 1,000. Notice that there are three zeros. And here from metres to centimetres, you multiply by 100. So there's two zeros. That's where the two comes in. And for the centimetres to millimetres, you multiply by 10, which is where the one comes in. So as an example, if I say two kilometres and I want to change it to metres, what I do is I take this number and I travel down this way and I multiply by 1,000. So two times a thousand is two thousand meters. Pretty clear. Um, now, if you have a decimal, there's a little trick involved. If I have, say, two point one kilometers, and I want to work out how many meters it is, uh, to multiply by a thousand, you move the decimal place three spots to the right. So I'd go one, two, three and I'd have to fill it in. So I'd have two, one, and it has an empty spot there and an empty spot there. So it goes to 2,100 metres, okay? Um, and if you want to go backwards, back over here, the opposite applies. You have to divide by 1,000, you have to divide by 100, and you have to divide by 10. That's not very good, let's write that up properly. Okay, so if I want to go back from millimetres to metres, let's say I had uh, 100 millimetres, which hopefully you have an idea is about the size of your hand width, I think, about 10 centimetres, which is probably about that far across. So it's going to be a point something. The question is what point something? It's going to be much smaller than a full metre. So what you do is you have to follow this chart and go back along to the metre. So you'd have to go divide by 10 and divide by 100 again. Or you can just go straight in one hit and divide by 1,000 straight away. So to divide, I have a decimal point that's hiding there at the back. Then I move across three spots, one, two, three. So this ends up being 0 0.100 meters. How are we doing? All good? Good. All right, so when you've got other units, the picture is a bit less complicated, actually. You hardly get any kiloliters, but the same rules apply. So let's say we had liters. What did I have here? Just normal litres, centilitres and millilitres. We hardly ever deal with those in between things. So actually what you have is a 3-3 rule. So to go down from litres to millilitres, you multiply by a thousand. Again, three for the three zeros there. And to go back up from millilitres to litres, you divide by a thousand. So in practice, you don't really deal with kiloliters a lot as a nurse because that's basically stuff that's like swimming pool size and you're not going to have lots of... <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. You're not going to have huge vats of chemicals and God help you if you put some into some poor person. <laughs> okay, so let's say we want to convert from litres to milliliters. Let's say we get... Um, uh, actually, no, you're more common... Oh, you've got, to, you've got to go both ways. So let's say you have two, 0 0.2 litres is how many millilitres? Well, if you follow there, you would go from there to there. So we have to multiply. And it kind of makes sense because you go from big units, a litre's about that big, to a millilitre, which is about that big. So you obviously have to think, if I have a number that's... Uh, in this unit, to go to this tiny unit, I'll have to have lots more of these ones. So it makes sense to go multiply. 
So I multiply by a thousand. Again, we do that trick. We move it across three spots and we fill in the blanks where there isn't uh, a, a digit. So we'll have two and then a spot there, zero, and another spot there, 200 mil. And you don't have to put the zero, the point in, but that's just me going, there it is. Yeah? And most of the times you need to go backwards as well. Let's say a 350 mil is how many litres. We'd have to follow this again. Mills going back to litres, you have to divide to make them a smaller number. So you think you've got lots of these. And if I go into the big unit, I will have much less of these little bits in them. So we start again with the decimal point. goes this way three spots because you're dividing by a thousand so you get 0 0.35 you don't have to put the zero in but that was where it used to be and you got 0 0.35 litres okay uh, do we have to do any else yes you do have some other stuff the last bit is when you have grams so kilogram normal grams, milligrams, and the killer, micrograms. Um, again, it's a 333 rule. And the other way you sometimes see that, that's not a very good one, is a funny looking U, and they're the same thing. That's microgram, that's microgram. And they are small, tiny units. So if you imagine that's a kilogram of whatever it is, and that's a milli, uh, that's a normal gram. A milligram might be that much, and a microgram might be a tiny bit, which is way smaller than that, and you can't even see it. So we kind of get the idea. Um, so you've got to do these ones again. So let's say we have um, an easy one, two kilograms into how many grams? Well, you've got to follow this and multiply by a thousand. Most people are good with this because grams is usually what you use for recipes in the kitchen and kilograms is what you use for um, when you weigh yourself or boxes or whatever. So two decimal places there, move it across three spots. That's 2,000 grams. And if we want to go backwards, uh, let's do 140 grams is how many kilos we have to divide by a thousand which means you take this decimal point and move it left three spots so you get 0 0.14 kilograms again that's the hiding zero it doesn't have to be there because it's at the back um, now if I had 14 grams same thing applies you'd have to divide by a thousand and so you move across three spots. And in this case, we've got to fill in the blank with an extra zero. So that blank would be this zero here, and then the one four. Um, the last couple are usually trickier because we don't really have an idea of what a milligram and a microgram are. They're kind of not really something you can physically weigh. So you have to kind of start getting familiar with them. So 400 milligrams equals how many grams? Well, you've got to think First of all, do I divide or times? That's a smaller unit, so I would go from a small unit to a big unit, which means you divide the number. And we check that, go from here to here, you divide over there, and you'd go three steps to the left, 0 0.4 grams. And we do another one, let's say we've got micrograms, 600 micrograms or let's say we call it like this, MC, MCG. Um, if we want to call, go back to milligrams, then we have to divide by a thousand. So you go this way, one, two, three. So you get 0 0.6 milligrams. Okay, good.